subscribe to bisbo and press the bell icon see boring news turn into enjoyable stories hi up at 18000 feet in ladakh along the line of actual control bordering china indian soldiers face a deadly enemy that refuses to budge despite innumerable rounds of talks the force status quo is keeping our brave hearts stuck in freezing temperatures where the lack of oxygen can be even more deadly 7296 of our warriors have been admitted to lay hospital for various respiratory disorders frostbites etc since the first galwan clash in june 2020 research shows that being older makes it harder in tough conditions and more than 60% of indian troops are above 30 it is no wonder then that other nations restrict their average age of troops to the mid to late 20s Achieving this is one of the major goals of the Agnivir program which seeks to reduce the average age to 26 over the next 6 to 7 years. The other major aim is to be able to give this young army better and modern weaponry so as to make it capable to fight a two front war against both Pakistan and China simultaneously. How to achieve both these objectives without straining India's finances was the brainchild of General Bipin Rawat the late chief of defense. Gentlemen our defense budget is not being used efficiently payments towards pensions and salaries had gone up four times in 10 years while spending on the upgradation of weapons went up only two times in the same period last year just about a quarter of its 67 billion dollar budget was spent on it while double of it went to salaries and pension and the ratio is worse for the army which gets the lion share of 58% of india's defense budget There, the spending on modern technology is a measly 8% as a whopping 76% is sucked by pensions and salaries. Most of India's recent purchases have been towards fighter planes like Rafale, aircraft carriers and predator drones, mainly Air Force and Navy needs. While the army just got one big ticket item, the S400 from Russia. Pensions further ballooned after the implementation of OROP, one rank one pension in 2014. where 34 lakh ex servicemen irrespective of the year of retirement got pensions as if they were retiring today for example if after serving for a standard 17 years an army man retired before the 2006 pay commission hike he would be getting a lesser pension and the one who retired after that obviously got much more orop both their pensions on par therefore something had to be thought of to reverse this ratio else the whole budget would eventually go to paying salaries and pensions Increasing the defense budget from 2% of GDP to 3% was one way to do it but the government is already running a huge fiscal deficit thus agnivir which will reduce future pensions by retaining the best 25% of the 50000 recruits each year and letting the other 75% go back to civilian life by doing this they would save 1 crore on each one of them or cumulatively 37500 crore almost half a billion dollars of pensions over a lifetime for just the 2022 23 batch of recruits even a super rich country like the US retires 80% of their personnel without pension as does China which lets go of most of its 4 and a half lakh annual recruits after serving for just 2 years which is why they like other armies and our neighbors control the amounts being spent under these heads the money thus saved on pensions can now be used for the second major aim of agnivir upgrading technology and weaponry which has increasingly become more important than boots on the ground as warfare is now mostly high tech streamlining the tooth to tail ratio a widely used army term the tail being the number of personnel required to support a tooth the main soldier in combat will reduce a minimum of 200 to 300000 troops within the next decade without reducing capability china's army is much stronger than before even though it reduced forces from over 4 million 30 years ago to under 1 million now this has allowed them to spend almost half their massive 252 billion dollar defense budget on modernization however the new policy which was announced suddenly upset the career plans of those looking to get in the army especially among those who had already cleared physical and medical tests and were waiting for the written exam held up for the past 2 years due to covid coaching institutes for army aspirants for example those run by avula subarao an ex army medical assistant who had multiple centers in andhra and telangana had a lot to lose and allegedly masterminded the attack on sikandrabad railway station 
Similar unrest across the country targeted trains for some reason, burning 60 of them and destroying property worth 700 crore. The government rightly course corrected by allowing those who had been waiting to give their written exam permission to apply for the first batch and promised a 10% reservation in various paramilitary forces like CRPF, Assam Rifles, Coast Guard, etc. Industry leaders too jumped in to back the scheme and promised to give preference to those Agnivirs not making the cut. Loans were made easier for ex Agnivirs, who can get an 18 lakh loan, giving a collateral of just 5.02 lakhs, their Seva Nidhi component. However, even those Agnivirs not making it will walk out with 11.71 lakh tax free money at the end of their 4 year tenure plus whatever else they manage to save from their monthly salaries. Where else in India can a 21-year-old college pass out on this kind of money? Armchair critics spoke at other deficiencies in the scheme, especially about their return to civilian life. If they don't get jobs, won't they be a threat to society? That the Jat, Sikh, Rajput, Dogra and Gorkha time-tested and highly motivated regiments, a tradition begun by Lord Roberts in the late 19th century during the British era, will gradually be phased out affecting morale because the army wants an all India, all class regiment. The army tried to calm things down by hinting at flexibility. It's sort of a pilot project but with very clear timelines, yet it can be tweaked after 4-5 to five years. Would an increase in serving time to 5-7 to seven years as suggested by various past committees be considered? Unlikely because the longer they are in the army, the more difficult it will be for returning Agnivirs to adjust to civilian life. However, the army's similar experience earlier with short tenure officers was not very successful. What started as a 5-year stint was raised to 10 years and even an option to extend till 14 years was created in 2006, beating the scheme's very purpose. This time though, there is a clear and present danger ahead and India's defence forces cannot afford to be complacent. Baseboos Limerick There is a programme called Agnivir that towards the future makes our army steer. A two-front war we cannot ignore. This creates a fighting unit that our foes will fear. You will also find these sources listed in our video description section.